Hi students, this is Ms. Ty here. In this video, we will review questions number 98 through 102 of the 2024 SHSAT practice exam form B. Grab a notebook and pencil and let's get started. Number 98, the height of a tree in 2013 is 300% of the height it was in 2003. By what percentage did its height increase over this 10 year period? Let's start off by using some numbers that will help us to contextualize what is going on in the problem. Let's say the height of a tree was 10 feet in 2003. 300% of 10 feet is the same thing as saying 300 over 100 times 10. These zeros will cancel out. So basically you're multiplying three times 10, which is 30. So if the height of the tree was 10 feet in 2003, it will be 30 feet in 2013. The question is, by what percentage did its height increase over this 10 year period? The percent increase formula is new minus original over original times 100. The new height in our example is 30 feet minus the original height, which is 10 feet, divided by 10, all times 100. So we have 20 over 10 times 100. These zeros will cancel out, and now we're left with 200%. So the correct answer is choice G. Number 99, one gallon equals 16 cups, and one cup equals eight fluid ounces. If one gallon equals two to the X fluid ounces, what is the value of X? We can use the transitive property to solve. Let's write it out. The transitive property states that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. I notice in both of these conversions, cups is a part of the conversions. So we will try to equalize these amounts. So we have one gallon equals 16 cups. Then our next step is to convert one cup into 16 cups. So we can multiply one cup times 16 and eight times 16 as well. One cup times 16 is 16 cups. And let's calculate uh, 16 times eight. So we have 16 times eight, eight times six is 48, but the eight carry the four. Eight times one is eight, eight plus four is 12. So 16 cups equals 128 fluid ounces. According to the transitive property, if A equals B and B equals C, then we can get rid of the middleman and let A equal to C. So since one gallon equals 16 cups and 16 cups equals 128 fluid ounces, we know that one gallon equals 128 fluid ounces. The next step is to convert 128 into an exponent with a base of two. So one gallon equals, let's see, Two times two is four, times two is eight, mm -hmm. times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64, times two is 128. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two to the seventh power is equivalent to 128. Therefore, X equals seven. B is the correct answer. Let's continue. Number 100. A certain square puzzle has an area of 64 square inches and a cubic block has a volume of 64 cubic inches. What is the ratio of the length of a side of the puzzle to the length of a side of the block? Let's draw a quick diagram. Now that we have a square and a block or a cube, let's figure out the dimensions of each of these figures. If an area of a square is 64, we know that each of the sides is going to be eight. How do we know that? We know that the area of a square is side squared and the area is 64. So 64 equals side squared. The opposite or inverse of squaring something is to find the square root. So by finding the square root of both sides, we know that the square root of 64 is eight inches. So eight inches will be the sides of the square. For the cubic block, the volume is 64 cubic inches. So the volume of a cube is S cubed. So we know that 64 equals S cubed. 
The inverse or opposite of cubing something is to find the cube root. We know that the cube root of 64 is four. So each of the sides of the cube will be four inches. Four times four is 16 and 16 times four is 64. The final question is asking us to find the ratio of the length of a side of the puzzle, which is eight inches, to the length of a side of the block, which is four inches. Eight to four will simplify to the ratio two to one. Therefore, H is the correct answer. 101. In a certain class, Rosa will take a total of four tests. She has already taken two of the tests and earned a score of 81 and 83. What is the least possible score Rosa can earn on the third test and still be able to finish the class with an average of 85 on all four tests? Assume that test scores can range from zero to 100. Rosa's goal average is 85. This is important to note. And there will be a total of four tests. So we know that the sum of all four tests divided by four must be equal to 85. The inverse of dividing by four is to multiply both sides by four. These fours will cancel out. And now we can see that the sum of all four tests must be four times five is 20. We will put the zero and carry the two. Four times eight is 32 plus two is 34. So all four tests must add up to 340. We have two of the tests already. 81 plus 83 equals 164. Now we need to see what is the sum of the remaining two exams. So we have 340 minus 164. We can't do zero minus four, so we are gonna borrow. This becomes three, 10 minus four is six. We can't do three minus six, so we'll borrow again. 13 minus six is seven, and two minus one is one. Therefore, the sum of these two remaining exams is 176. This is the sum of the two remaining exams. So the question is, what is the least possible score Rosa can earn on the third test and still be able to finish the class with an average score of 85? So the maximum score that she can receive on one of the exams is 100. So I will subtract 100 from 176, and we have 76 as the lowest possible score that she can have on the third exam. So A is the correct answer. Remember, the sum of the two exams has to be 176, so we want to maximize one of the scores so we can minimize the other score. The maximum possible score is 100, therefore there are 76 possible points remaining for the other exam. Let's continue. Number 102. The Barnes family and the Ramirez family each have a pizza of equal size. The first pizza is cut into 18 equal slices, and the second pizza is cut into 15 equal slices. If the Barnes family eats 11 slices from the first pizza, what is the greatest number of whole slices from the second pizza that the Ramirez family can eat without eating a greater percentage of a pizza than the Barnes family ate? Let's determine the percentage of the pizza that the Barnes family ate. Since the Barnes family ate 11 out of 18 slices, we can convert this fraction into a percent. To convert a fraction into a percent, we can go ahead and multiply by 100. So we have 1100 divided by 18. Since 18 times five is 90, I will try 18 times six. Six times eight is 48. Six times one is six plus four is 10. So we have 108 for 18 times six. So I know that 110 divided by 18 is going to be six with a remainder of two. And 20 divided by 18 goes in one time with the remainder of two. So we have 61 and two over 18, which is the percentage. So we can simplify that into 61 and one ninth percent. If you guys recall from one of our other videos, one ninth is the same thing as 
0.1 repeating. So that's another way we can take a look at this percentage. So approximately the Barnes family ate 61% of the first pizza. So the second pizza is cut into 15 slices. And our goal is to figure out what is the biggest number of slices expressed as a percent that is still going to be less than 61%. I know that the 50% mark would be at 7.5. So we want to go a little bit higher than that. So I would like to take a look at 8 out of 15 and 9 out of 15 to figure out which one of these is still less than 61.1%. 9 out of 15 is easier for me because we can simply just divide both the numerator and denominator by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we now have three out of five, which is 60%. So that actually looks like the best possible choice here. So if the Ramirez family eats nine slices, this amount will still be less than 61.1%. So H is the correct answer. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.